Good morning. This is the third uh, Sunday in Easter, and uh, we assemble here as God's people, as the Church of the Living God, to worship Him. You guys should also remember that in the Chimeris ministry, our ministry is part of the outpouring of the Pentecostal ministries of the Presbyterians um, today. Um, what we do is a special ministry that is ecumenical in nature. Well, by no matter your faith, no matter the church you go to, you are invited to share in this worship and in our ministration. So we start this service in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, both now and forever. Amen and amen and amen. In today's instruction and direction, we begin to listen and put into practice what happened between Abraham and God and Isaac and angels and a ram in a ticket. So we will begin to expand that scripture. Genesis chapter 22 will be where we'll be concentrating um, today. I, um, I, I read the, the lectionary page for today, all the uh, readings of the church. My spirit didn't go there. So, so we just continued with sacrifice on uh, at the altar. So we go to um, the second part of that. We are now entering into the main, main things. Let us pray. Thou who givest power and authority to your servants to save you, so that they have inner strength. You kindled in them the way of your kingdom. Fill us with the same power. Light the fire inside us. We will follow you wherever you go, Jesus. During the course of this week, minister to your people the experience of the manifestation of the Spirit in every area of our lives. That we can say, like Abraham, it is the Lord who has made us rich. We ask all this in the name of God, the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And amen. We have an announcement. Tomorrow is May 1st, is the beginning of May. So from, from um, tomorrow, Monday till Sunday, we will be fasting from 6 to 6. It's a war kind of fasting. This is when we do real warfare. We're not talking about what people just say about spiritual warfare. They don't know what they're talking about. We'll be meeting every evening, 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern, to pray and to break our fasts. Let us share the word from sacred scripture appointed for today. Genesis 22, 1 through 19, from the New International Version. Some time later, God tested Abraham. He said, Abraham, 
here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Laura. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on the mountain. I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father? Yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? (laughs) Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. Amen. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied, do not lay a hand on the boy, he said, do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up, and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. And to this day, it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. There you go. The angel of the Lord caught Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of your enemies. Yes. Of their enemies. And through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed. Yes. Because you have obeyed me. Yes. Then Abraham returned to his servants, and they set off together for Beersheba, and Abraham stayed in Beersheba. Amen. The Lord bless to us the reading from his holy word and unto his name be the praise and glory, honor and power and dominion, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And amen. During these seven days, we are going to be looking at this chapter of scripture for seven days. This is the chapter that we are going to concentrate. This is very, very powerful. Let's begin from verse number one. This is so, I'm so excited. (laughs) Begin from verse one. Let's look at verse number one. You like 
Yeah, we are now beginning to expose it. We've started our fasting. Okay. First one. Some time later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Okay. That is verse number one. See how mine put it. And it came to pass. After do after these things that God did tempt, mine says tempt. The word there is test. Let's see how it is in the Hebrew Bible. And he's becoming after these things. <laughs> yeah. The days and Aleem he broke. Ah, I like that. Hebrew Bible says probe. What's the meaning of probing somebody? Anybody? Anybody pick it up? What's the meaning of probe? He proved Abraham. P R O B E D. What's the meaning of probing somebody? Probe. Look it up in your dictionary. What's the meaning of probing? The the verse that the, 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 the translation that you were reading from Sacred Scripture this morning says uh, tempt. Um he said he tested, he tested, yours says tested. King James Version says, the King James Version says, tempt. The Hebrew version says probe. After these things, when God gives you a gift, whether it be a supernatural gift, whether it be a marriage, whether it be a business, whether it be money, whether it be a great job, your dream job, your dream car, your dream child, or children, your dream friend, or business partners. Let me say good morning to Rene and to, and to Ladry. Natalie in Tobago, good morning. And Vivian also. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those of you who are watching this program from England, from the United Kingdom, I send my greetings to you all. Hallelujah. If you have been asking God for something powerful, something that if you don't have it, you don't feel complete. So let me ask you again, what is it that you are asking God that if you do not have that thing, you will never feel that you have fulfilled what you were designed to do on the earth. Or that you have a future. Your future is not complete. Your, your destiny or what you were designed for is not complete. What you were designed to do is not yet done. Your dream is still stunted, dwarfed. It's not complete. For Abraham, it was a child from his beloved goddess, Sarah. The housemaid has given them a child in the person of Ishmael. That's Hagar, small. Hagar has given birth to Ishmael for Sarah. 
for Abraham. But Abraham wanted what he can call his own. What came from his wife? Oh, let it be Eliezer. Oh, let it be Ishmael. Let them find favor in your sight. Oh, Aleim Yahweh. Yahweh Aleim. Lord God, let both of them find favor in your sight. In fact, at one point he said, Is it Eliezer, the administrator of my household, who is going to be in charge of everything? That was before um, Ishmael came. And now let Ishmael find favor in your side. God say, no. I know what you are really looking for. That when you have it, you will be happy. I'm going to give it to you. You see, where we lose out here is, we think that because God has said something about what we seriously are demanding for, that it will happen in one day. What is most important to you, many a times will not come in one day. Not even one week. It took years before Isaac came. It took years. And there were proceedings. There were things that happened along the way. Mistakes will be made. Things will happen naturally. But when God look inside you and find that there is something big you are looking for, something that will complete you, something that will make you happy forever, he will give it to you. I say he will give it to you. I say he will give it to you. So Isaac came. When Isaac was born, listen to this. I like the way the King James Version put it. And it came to pass, after these things, the celebrations, the happiness, the joy, you've now gotten what you've been asking for. The dollar, the euro, the pound sterling is here. The money is here. The car, your dream car is here. Your dream husband or dream wife is here. The dream children are here. The dream house is here. The dream business is here. The dream job is here. The degree you were looking for from years of studies is now in your hand. You can now relax, take a vacation, go on holiday, fly to Vegas, go to the Caribbean and enjoy yourself under the coconut tree. <laughs> it's all good in the neighborhood. Louis, I hope that you are watching this program. I like Louis a lot. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Mm. God bless you, Miss G. Lizzie. Mwah. That woman, she's strong. Never seen an Indian woman that tough. Ruby, don't be jealous now. You've always been there. Allow, allow Lizzie to enjoy a little bit of my love. <laughs> You've been enjoying it all, all alone. Yep, love from Mumbai.com. <laughs> yep. Uh, am I, Lizzie, am I not, um, am I not entitled to uh, love from from uh, not India, from your family. 
So Ruby, Ruby, allow me to enjoy Lizzie a little bit, please. <laughs> yeah. Victoria, thank you for your services. We love you, Mama. We love you. You are a great girl. Yeah. We love you. You are a sweetheart. And so, Abraham is enjoying his glory days. Like I was just doing. I was just enjoying myself. He's very happy. Big feasts. Big feasts. Now he has two kids. One out of natural proceedings of things, natural union, another out of supernatural promise. My friends, he was having the best times of his life. Everyone was busy with feasting and having a good time. And Isaac was growing up. God was watching. Now he got what he wanted. <laughs> Let me sit back and watch and see his reaction to an answered prayer. Let me tell you, Ladry, listen carefully. Beverly, where are you? Where are you? Listen carefully. Let, let, me, let me speak to those of you. Let me look into the camera. I am a junkie for answered prayers because the Lord God is a God that answers prayers. He's a God that is full of fun. He's a God who knows how to complete you. He knows who will complete you. He knows how you will be completely completed. He knows what is going to make you happy. He also knows your spirit. He is giving you what you've asked him. There were things that your parents couldn't achieve. You are going to achieve them all. But the Almighty is going to sit back and watch. How you react to what God gave you and how you respond to God after he has given you what you have been struggling, quarreling, complaining, doubting, is going to be very important. Hallelujah. I know many of you who are asking God, I need this. I need that, I need this, I need that. And it shall come to pass that you will have exactly what you've been asking for. But fools are going to walk away. Why? And they are going to go to other pastors and bishops and prophets crying over the same thing. Many of them think that, oh, the guy Mary doesn't have it anymore. He doesn't have supernatural power to perform miracles anymore. No, that's not true. He cannot prophesy anymore. That's not true. It's not about me. It's about you. It's about whether you're willing to wait for God to put it together for you. If Abraham was willing to wait for God to put it together for him, why not you? Please listen carefully. <laughs> the 
there is no single day. All right, who is that? Please put your phone on mute, whoever that is. Put your phone on mute. There is no single day that I do not receive reports of testimonies. There is no single day. But how? I begin to see how people will respond to what gives them by the way they react to me. Their excitement, their commitment, their financial devotion to me and to our ministry will tell me, will reveal how they are going to react. In fact, it will reveal their greed or their yieldedness. All I need to do, all God needs to do is to give you some money. And some people become foolish. Some people become something else. Others, it will draw them nearer to God and they will be quiet, excited, but quiet. Abraham was so excited. And God watched as the child grew up. As Isaac grew up. The one that brought him and Sarah. Sarai. The one that brought them. Laughter. I'm going to spend some time to do a broadcast on Isaac. Everything about his life. Because you need some laughter. You need some serious laughter every day of your life. This is going to be very, very important in your life. Hallelujah. You're going to need some serious laughter. And God knows what is going to make you laugh. All the days of your life. And he's going to give it to you. But there is a but. He's going to watch how you respond to the gift he gives you. To the breakout that he pours out on you. He's going to watch what you're saying. He's going to watch the way you react. And he is going to use that position of authority that he has put you. He's going to use that marriage. He's going to use that friendship. He's going to use your beauty. He's going to use everything that you were looking for that will make you happy. Finally, he gave it to you. Here we go. God going to sit back, kick back, and observe you. <laughs> because you see, it is in answered prayer that God going to make a decision on whether you are somebody who is trustworthy or not. The way you are going to react to the things you are looking for when it finally comes. Whether you are going to abuse it. Whether you are going to make an idol out of it. It's going to be very important. Or whether you are going to say this is secondary to the real thing I'm pursuing. Which is my relationship with God comes first. Every other thing is secondary. Some people, God has given them beauty, they have abused it. Different, different things God has given them. Supernatural gift, different, different things, they have abused it. And when you are abused, 
and you make an idol out of what God has given to you, he will never trust you anymore. He can allow you to keep operating in your gifts and to keep what he gives to you. He's not going to come to take it. In some instances, he will. In other instances, he will allow you to keep it. But he will walk away from it so that you struggle with it all through. That's why many of you are struggling in your marriages. Because your marriage is God. Or with your children, because your children, they are that is your God. Or your car, or your house, or your land, or your friendship, or your money. Just watch sometimes how people who are wealthy treat people who don't have money, then you know what I'm talking about. God is watching how you are pursuing money, how you are pursuing relationship, how you are pursuing the things of this world. He's watching to see whether you are somebody through those things. You see, let me tell you another thing you need to know. God will give you what you want in order to know what is really in your heart. All he needed was to give Lucifer a little bit of position to rule a planet called the earth and to be in his presence once in a while. And he began thinking about starting his own government. God will give you money. God will give you power. God will give you beauty. God will give you marriage. God will give you children. God will give you houses. God will give you education. God will give you positions of leadership where you are leading people to find out what is really in your heart. What kind of spirit you are. Not that he doesn't know, but he takes fun to find out from you. To really make sure. Because he's a detailed God. That's why God allows you to come to look for him. Because that reveals who you really are. He knows those who will do, who will cross the river and the mountain to look for him because they are looking for things. And when once they get it, the chase is over. He knows those kind of people. There are people who will fast, say 40 days fasting, they will do it. Anything they will do because they want something. When once they have it, they will abuse it. The chase is over. Bye. See ya, Jesus. But God sat back and watched Abraham and watched as Sarah and Abraham and the servant raised Isaac. The laughter, the one that completed them, that brought laughter. And then God decided to say, God decided, I've given this guy wealth. I've given this guy, I'm starting a new nation with this guy. I'm big. I've started already. But the most important thing he needed is a child of his own from his wife. Now let me see how he's going to react, whether he's going to walk away like the rest of human beings. Whether he worship me because of money that I give him. Whether he loves me because of things. Whether he loves me because I give him covering. Geneva, make sure you remind me. I need to put on the website about Bishop's Covering. Bishop's Covering. I need, I need to have that. There are people that the Holy Spirit have been telling me who need my covering. So I need to do that. I need to put it out there. We need to advertise that. I've given this guy a covering, protection. 
But I'm going to find out whether I am who I am in his life or he is just using me. You need to begin to pray that God will make, will expose people in your life to know whether they are following you for things or for money or whether they love you for you. And they will stand by you and protect you and promote you and will never be jealous. In fact, their happiness is to see you climb. And as Isaac grew up, God decided to strike at Abraham. You see, what you love best is what God is going to use to try your heart. If you want the presidency, Many a times, God will allow you to do all you can do to win. And then he'll sit back to see whether you're a good man or not, or a good woman or not. And many a time, a lot of people fail God when it comes to leadership. God is going to probe you. To probe means to find out what is in the inside of you. You can tell people all you want to tell people, but God is going to expose you. You can pretend all you want to pretend, but that day is coming that God is going to bring out of you what is in you. And everybody will see it. God is going to test your obedience. Whether you want heaven because you don't want to go to hell, or you want heaven because God lives in heaven, we're going to know. Whether you want to go to heaven, where you're going to get a free house, you're going to live on welfare, Jesus' is welfare, he's going to find out while you're on the earth. And because of it, you don't want to struggle like everybody else and buy your own house and maintain it. And start your own business. Or have a great job. He's going to find out. Because his job is always to probe the human's mind. The human spirit our ways. We can tell him all we want to tell him, but he's going to expose us finally. And that probing is what we call tempt. He tempted him or tested him, put him on the scale to know who really he is. Because we can fool people so much, but we cannot fool God. And let's see how he probed him. And God said to him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am, which means I'm always yours. I'm here for you. Whatever you desire of me, I will do it for you. You come first. I am here because you sent me. What I have is because you gave me. I don't have a life that is my own. That's the meaning of behold, here I am. You are more important to me than anything, than any human being, than any being. 
See, Abraham is better than Lucifer. Far more better than fallen angels and demons. This sounds like Jesus to me. Whatever you want, Lord, I'll give it to you. And listen to what he said. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son, ah, Isaac, which thou lovest, you see? Abraham loved Ishmael and her mother, but the greatest love of Abraham was for Isaac, Sarah's son. God knew it, what you really love. And what you love the most is what he is going to use to reveal you, to test you, to probe you, to know whether you qualify for more things. See, while we are asking for breakout, breakout start from when God comes and break into your life. Allow, I mean, when he gives you things that will result in him probing you. Everything God gives you will either nullify you or qualifies you. Please write that down. Everything God gives you and is going to give you will nullify you or qualifies you. I know that you love Isaac more than anything. But take him. Get a hold of him. Hmm. Say, which thou lovest. I like that. And get thee <coughs> into the land of Moriah. Offer him there for a burnt offering <coughs> upon one of the Mountains, which I will tell thee of. Do you guys think that Abraham discussed this kind of thing with Sarah? I don't think so. I'm not sure. It's not everything. There are certain things between you and God only. <laughs> if you look at there, there is a place where a family discusses things there's a place where it is everyone, the children, the mother, the father there's a place where it is just the two of them, the mother and the father there's a place where it's just you alone and your God I, I didn't think that Abraham told Sarah about this I'm very confident he did not. Why? This is the biggest thing they were looking for. She's already chased Ishmael and her mother away. She's already done that. Sarah already chased them out. And now her son is going to inherit everything. And now you are coming back to tell me that the same God who gave you this child is asking you to go and offer him as a total bent offering. You must be crazy, Abraham. Now I know that you either have schizophrenia or you are suffering from um, all sorts of mental diseases. You are now hearing voices. In fact, Satan is talking to you, Abraham. He's not the most high God. I will never believe that God will give you something and now he asks you to go and take a whole child that we have suffered to get. That's how people talk. Instead of saying, well, God gave us this child. 
Say we've suffered a lot. We've suffered the abuse of people who complain that we can't have children. And now we have this child. You will need to see a doctor tomorrow morning. They need to put you on medication, Abraham. Maybe because you fought too many wars. Maybe because you are homesick from your country where we left. Abraham, there's something wrong with you. And you need to go to the Holy Ghost to ask him for help. Are you sure you're hearing from the Holy Ghost? So Abraham knew the voice of the Lord. He knew it is God who is talking to him. Take him to the top of the mountain. Take him to the mountain. Tomorrow, we begin officially our beginning of the month, seven days fasting and prayers that will last till Sunday. I urge you like Abraham to come to the mountain with me. Leave, leave the love of talking and wanting to talk. Tell your husband and wife and friends, leave sex alone for seven days. Cut down your food. Because there are, there is going to be a mighty manifestation of the spirit beginning from now. It will be an ongoing event of the manifestations of signs and wonders because we agree fast at the mountain. Bring all that you love best. Your job, your family, everything, bring them to him during these seven days. Let God probe you. Let God see what is in there. That you love him more than you love yourself. Let go of sleep and tiredness and weakness because your body doesn't like God. I just want you to be aware that your physical body does not like Jesus. It doesn't like God Almighty, the Father. It doesn't like the Holy Ghost. It doesn't like the things of the supernatural. It loves the things of the earth. Why? Because it came from the earth. You are the one who is going to force, to force it, to, to, to woo it, to, to coerce it, to, to, to date yourself. To be in God's presence. If not, your body will want to sleep. It will want to be sick. When once fasting and the word of God and the things of God is concerned, your body will become sick. Because it doesn't want none of that. That's when you'll start seeing problems coming from left and right. Ignore them. They can wait. Don't respond to any of those things. Bills are coming from left and right. Ignore those bills. Don't read them. Just put them somewhere. In fact, put them on the ground and match them. Stamp your feet on them. And throw them and put them somewhere. And let them stay there. Until you finish what you are doing. The universe don't want your God. But you're going to impose your God on the universe. Abraham, you may not like this. You may not like this. But you are going to take Isaac to the mountain. And you are going to offer him as a sacrifice at the altar of the mountain. Ha ha. <laughs> you may not like this. It might be the last $1,000 seed. A million dollars seed in your hand. And the Almighty is asking you, send it to the Kai Mary ministry. Send it to the Kai Mary. Help him to, to put these things together. To keep this thing going so that the gospel is broadcasted around the world. God will tell you to do things that look stupid, foolish, or they will look out of place. And you'll go and do it. And all of the things you are looking for in life will break out.
It began to happen. Because the things of God doesn't make sense many a times. It's later on that it makes sense. It only makes faith sense. That's all. Moses, go and hit the, 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 the sea with your shepherd's staff. Doesn't make sense naturally. See, it doesn't divide when somebody hit it with a, 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 a stick. It doesn't divide. But it did. We want to stop here. We will continue here tomorrow night. We will continue this passage this Sunday. We are going to dig this chapter until we finish it. To take us seven days to finish this one chapter. I am concentrating everything I'm reading now on this chapter. My prayers, my devotion, everything is on Genesis chapter 22 during these first seven days. This is my life right here. Hallelujah. Eternal Father, we devote this week to you. We will not allow anything to sidetrack us from fasting, from prayer at the mountaintop, whereby we will give to you in sacrifice everything that we love and everyone that we love and we care about. It is your will or nothing. And we know for a fact that we will receive many good things. Why? Because we love you and we care about you. And you are going to see it. We ask for the help of your spirit because we put you first. Amen. And amen and amen. Amen. The Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, both now and forevermore. And the blessing of God Almighty come upon you and abide in you and in me forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And amen. So I will see you. I will see you. All of you, I will see you tomorrow night. Please enjoy your weekend and remember me too. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.